The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome into Views from the Sideline. I'm Joey Tysick. Across from me is Malik Hill, and we are in the winter months. November 1st, and there's snow on the ground a day after Halloween. Halloween night, actually. We uh, got some snow, and it is cold outside, and it's, uh, I don't know. I don't like it. Listen, if we didn't get as much snow as some places in the UP. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, Central Michigan played football last night, and it was snowing a lot. Yeah, a lot. And the the Toledo Buffalo game, it was a lot of snow too. So mm-hmm. it's yeah. that time of year. Yeah, we saw some snow last uh, week in the NFL with the Broncos and Chiefs. They have some crazy like technology on the field though that they were able to melt all the snow, which was wild um, before the kickoff and stuff. So it didn't really even matter. Um, but we got some NBA stuff to talk about. There was, I mean, it's technically it's a big trade, but it was expected for a lot of people. So to me, it's not that big of a deal. Um, college football playoff first uh, rankings came out, and we have uh, NFL to talk about as well. With week nine already in there is crazy amount of injuries, I feel like, as well as the trade deadline just happened in the NFL. Um, so to start, we're going to talk about the NBA real quick. Uh, James Harden got traded. To the Clippers, finally, after, I don't know, it had been rumored for months that he was going to be a Los Angeles Clipper. Um, What do you make of this trade, uh, Malik? Is James Harden the greatest quitter in NBA history? Oh, gosh. I mean, four, four, four trades, right? Yeah. Forced some- his way out of OKC, forced his way out of Houston, forced his way out of Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And no, out of the he said uh, Philly was where he wanted to be. Yeah. And now he hates Daryl Morey and their mortal enemies, and he forced his way out of Philly. Yeah. Uh, the full details, since I pulled it up because I almost forgot, Harden, P.J. Tucker, and Philip Petrusev uh, going to the Clippers for Marcus Morris, Robert Covington, Nick Batum, K.J. Martin, a 2028 unprotected first round, two second round picks, a 2029 pick swap, and an additional first round pick from the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's a lot. For a guy that hasn't, let me tread carefully. He hasn't like proven his worth. Uh, he was an All Star level player. Last I know, year. like that's he that's, wasn't a, the superstar anymore. But he's he not was an like All Star player. I just wonder if he's like bought in. That's my biggest problem to be trading that many assets away. I guess you're so, talking about James Harden. Yeah, I don't for think he, James Harden. I don't think James Harden is bought into anything anymore. Right. Besides, but I guess, but I guess, I think he still loves playing basketball. But I don't think he, yeah. And does I it guess, really seem like James Harden cares about no being an incredible like teammate? And no, I don't think so. And I think this is just kind of the Clippers' like last shot. Like, hey, we got Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, and Russ Westbrook. That's a pretty old team in today's standards. So, two K fourteen. This team is at least one of the greatest things you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. Um, so they are now the new super team. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't even call them that, honestly. Yeah, I don't know how uh, it's gonna work. This is they're just a team. Mm-hmm. There's nothing super about this team. Yeah, like if you're a Clippers fan, you're excited. Why would any other basketball fan be excited about this? I don't know. Like really? And I would be skeptical even as a Clippers fan. As weird as it is, like Russell Westbrook's had a pretty good start to the season. Um. Kawhi Leonard's been pretty solid. He had a bad game last night. Um, and then Paul George is kind of Paul George every time. He's kind of the same thing every every night. He's really good. Yeah, for sure. And one of the most popular hoopers of this era, mm-hmm. which is we're coming to know. Yeah. Every like young hooper coming out of high school looks at him mm-hmm. as like one of the greatest. Yeah. So to see how James Harden is going to fit into this situation is going to be really weird. 
I feel like they're all going to become up, <laughs> become like spot up shooters, and they're all just going to like pass around the top of the key, and then somebody's going to take a three at the end of the clock. Here, here's my thing. How many games total do you think all four of them play together? That's a really good question because they That's have. My thing. I, I saw somebody who uh, gets hurt first. <laughs> I saw somebody uh, like comment on one of the one of the reports of the trade happening, and they posted a picture of just a knee and like all the ligaments and things in a knee and just talking about which one goes first or something like that. Just because they've all had knee injuries, they've all had their own issues with injuries in Do you general. Think they play close to 40 games together. I mean, history <laughs> tells us no, but it, it's hard to say how many back to backs are they playing this year? Because Kawhi Leonard won't be playing that second back to back. That's a good, yeah. So I, I, I have no, I'm not excited about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really not like. I don't know if it's because I've lost like some of my love for the NBA. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's because I think super teams are just they're not really impressive anymore to me. Yeah, like I, it's it's just not exciting. I think the other thing that people are forgetting about these super teams nowadays they're throwing away all their depth, and if you don't have depth, what that one injury all it takes. And then hey, their team is over. They got to keep Terrence Mann. They said they said he was a he was a no no. I mean, he's a, they they weren't giving up Terrence Mann. He's a good because apparently he's that guy. But they gave up all their veteran shooters: Rocco, Nick Batum, so, like those guys. I, I mean, they don't do a ton Nick for the Batum, team barely. But Marcus Morris was valuable, right? Marcus Morris and, does yeah does his thing every once in a while. So it's like. I don't know. I, I think teams are getting too hyper focused on the, these elite players and not focusing on their depth enough. And that's what I've said about like the uh, Bucks, especially getting Damian Lillard. Like their depth is a no go at this point. Um, other teams like the Suns and the Celtics kind of rounded out their depth a little bit with some some minor moves, which I think is going to help them. But I don't know. It makes me nervous when these, especially a team like the Clippers, who have all these guys that are known for having injuries. So. I don't know. Known for having injuries and high usage. Exactly, yeah. Even though Russ and James have played together for a little cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. it's I'm, I'm not excited. Yeah. I'm tired of James Harden. I kind of wish he'd just go away. Yeah. <laughs> and I I did like how the Clippers were playing so far. Mm-hmm. Russ was kind of getting his mojo back, like you said. Yeah. yeah. Paul George and Kawhi were playing well, looking healthy. And, yeah, now you just throw James Harden into it. Right. They were getting Bones Highland some more playing time, and, you know, he's a, a an up-and-coming yeah. player that people like. So. When was the last time somebody threw James Harden into it and things went very well? Right. Yeah. So it's it's another wait and see. I mean, maybe it works out. Um, I guess it, it would be interesting if it works out and make it fun for the league. But I'm happy for Tyrese Maxey. That's who I'm happy for. Yeah. He's looked really good without James Harden there. Yeah. And I, I'm not even – it sounds weird. He just won MVP. I'm not even thinking about Joel Embiid. They're yeah. not going to win a championship. Yeah, it's, He's well, not winning one in Philly. But I want Tyrese Maxey to get his money and put up his numbers. Yeah, Because he he's probably going to be a first-time All-Star this year. And I love watching him play. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, and, clear and space for Tyrese. Joel Embiid keeps putting out these cryptic, weird tweets that keep keep people thinking that he might not be in Philly for that much longer. So It's a good chance he won't. Yeah. Yeah. We'll Daryl Morey failed again. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, let's go to the flip side. Uh, the bright side of the NBA right now is our bright young team, the Detroit Pistons. Uh, they're 2-2 two and two right now. They beat the Hornets and the Bulls, lost on opening night to the Heat in a super close game, lost by one after a big comeback, um, and then lost two nights ago against the Thunder. What have you seen out of this team so far things you like things you don't like seeing Cade Cunningham as the guy on this team being healthy it just it just puts a smile on my face like just seeing those moments where it's clear that he's the guy on the floor Mm -hmm. he can get his shot when he wants to he needs to cut the turnovers down but he's still getting into a groove of his game because he was out pretty much all of last year right so I'm I'm happy with what I've seen from him. Uh, Killian Hayes, uh, what what is? He plays decent defense. He hits shots sometimes. Congratulations, Killian. Uh, 
I like what Jaden Ivey is giving them off the bench. Mm-hmm. Isaiah Stork is doing everything that they need outside of like score. He he hits his open threes, but he they don't need him to do yeah. that and like score a bunch in the post. He does. He rebounds. He scores when he has to in the post and hits open threes. I've been very impressed with Asar Thompson. Now he needs to tighten his handle because he's turned it over too. Yeah, but he's a rookie. He's still a raw talent. But man, his his defensive versatility, mm-hmm. his instinct for getting blocks and steals. Yeah, how unselfish he is when he he knows when to make the right pass. Mm-hmm. He is like I said, Sadiq Bay. He was like my favorite of like the young group because I said he was like the glue piece. Yeah. Asar Thompson looks like he's really going to be the glue piece. Yeah. I w- he gives you everything. It's funny that I was going to use the exact same terminology. Yeah. I was going to say he's a perfect glue piece. Um, and I would give – already early on, I would give him the highest praise and say he's a very similar player to Corliss Williamson back in the day and Tayshaun Prince. Guys that just get it done. They can score you some points, get you some rebounds, play good defense, Yeah, and they're just they're just there to do their job. They and make need winning that. plays. And you need that on a team. Um, what was it? In game in the first game against the Heat, he had like four blocks or something like that? He had three blocks in like the first yeah, quarter. In, yeah, really yeah. quick. Um, so, yeah, I love what he's doing for the team. I agree. We kind of talked about it before the show. The biggest thing is just the turnovers for this team. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe that's because of the young, the young core. They're still figuring out their chemistry with being without Cade all of last year. Jaden Ivey still – trying the six man experience. Killian Hayes, he's 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 there. Yeah, he's he is on the team. Monte Morris, <laughs> please get healthy. Yeah. Please get healthy. Um the other rookie, Marcus Sasser, he's looked pretty good in his spots. Hit some threes. Yeah. Uh looks confident at least. Some underrated Alec Burks is playing so well. I loved he when we got Alec so, Burks yeah. um all what that is time his ago. Point percentage right now? I don't know. It's probably pretty he's good. He's shooting 53% from three. That'll go down. Mm-hmm. But if he's around 40%, that would be amazing. He's shooting yeah. so well. He's a player and, that just shows up, and he, he scores for every team he's been on. And I think th- like there was a while where Alec Burks looked like he could be a guy that broke out into the NBA, and then he had his injuries, yeah. and he never kind of— ended up being Gordon Hayward in Utah. Yeah, and then he kind of went away for a lot of uh, for a while. He came back from his injuries, started making uh, being like a good bench scorer— um, and so a lot of people kind of forgot about him, but when the Pistons picked him up, I thought it was a great move. Yeah, but I I want to bring up, I think the most underrated part of the Pistons season so far through just four games, Marvin Bagley is playing really, really well off the bench. Mm-hmm. He is averaging 11.5 points, 5.5 rebounds, 1.3 assists on 65%. Well, 66% shooting from the field. Yeah. Like, he's not forcing anything. He's getting good shots. He's hitting open threes. He's rebounding. Every time they put him in the game, he is giving them quality minutes. Yeah. And I I'm, I really like what Marvin Bagley has given them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's been a nice addition to the bench. Um, it, it just makes the bench feel so much better that we have yeah. some depth on this team, potentially. And our best, well, yeah, like best bench options are still hurt. Yeah. Monte Morris. Mm-hmm. Uh, Isaiah, St- not Isaiah, St- Livers. Isaiah Livers. Yep. And Bogey isn't even back yet. Right. And if when Bojan comes back, we don't know what the rotation is going to look like. So somebody else might get pushed to the bench. A star Thompson might get pushed to the bench. And as bad as that sounds right now, it might be really good. Him and Jaden Ivey together <laughs> off the bench would, would right. be Right. It really could be a exciting. lot of fun. And Monte Morris. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The one guy that we haven't talked about yet, though, Jalen Duran. That Listen, man. We needed to save that for last. That man is a steal. He is beyond Ben Wallace, the new Ben Wallace at this point. Yeah. Like, people say, Andre Drummond was giving you the same stuff. No. And you were, this isn't, this isn't, this doesn't feel like, this is different. Mm -hmm. No. Andre Drummond didn't feel like this. It didn't look like this. Mm -hmm. Like, Jalen Duran looks like he is dominating. Yeah. He's got the mean factor that Ben Wallace had. And I I don't want to tout him to Ben Wallace just yet. But he's obviously got more of an offensive game. He's taller. He's longer. It's easier to throw lobs to him. Um, he has a little bit more of a post game than Ben did. Um, but he's just as tenacious, and his defense is only going to get better. People forget he's 19 years old. So to have him and Cade as the like the the two core people pieces to this team, 
is incredible. Yeah. I know we both liked uh, Duran out of the draft. Thought it was a steal then, but it's looking even better right now. He is averaging 15 and a half, 13.3, and three assists. 19 yeah. year old, second year center. Yeah. Real deal. Mm hmm. And like we said, he's, he's, Already built up too. Like he's not, yeah. you know, the Chet Holmgrens and those guys that we. He been he has that like Dwight Howard, freakish yeah. God given like, yeah, just athletic body. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I agree with that. So Pistons looking good so far. It's been fun. Tonight um, they've got Portland at home, which they should beat Portland because Portland hasn't looked great so far. Portland's been rough. Yeah, Scoot is off to a rough start. Yeah. DeAndre yeah. Ayton had 23 rebounds last game. Yeah. But outside of that, he hasn't looked very good. Mm -hmm. it, they they should beat Portland. Well, uh, Jalen Dern is a game-time decision, so mm -hmm. Marvin Bagley might start. We'll see think, about that. I think Anthony Simons is still hurt for them, as far as I know, because I think Shaden Sharp. Yeah, he's Anthony start. Simons is out. Yeah. Him and Ish Wayne Wright. Nah. <laughs> and yeah, Jalen Duran is a game time decision. Yeah. Um, any other thing you want to talk about in the NBA? Do you want to talk about Wemby for a minute? We can. I mean, yeah, we can we can talk about Wemby. Give our overall thoughts on the game so far. Wemby, he's he's just saying, he's impressive. Mm -hmm. He is really impressive. Now, the way they're using him at times, I'm not a big fan. Like there are times where he has obvious matchups in the post. Yeah, and they'll run a play where it brings him back out to the three point line, mm -hmm. and that's like, yeah, he's very skilled. He can go out there, but yeah, he's seven four and has a post game. Right, like you don't have to swing him out to the three point line. Yeah, I think we are finding out that he does still need to put on some muscle mass because um, he's getting pushed around a bit, um, and guys are starting to realize that. He matched up against Kevin Durant last night, and that was that was fun to watch yeah. for a minute. Um, it also makes you realize how good Kevin Durant is. I think. As weird as it sounds, I think people forget that sometimes. Listen, man, he's he's one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, um, Kevin Durant had a crazy fadeaway over Victor, and it was he he put his body into. People forget Kevin Durant is has put some weight on. Yeah, he's he's almost seven foot, and he's like almost mm -hmm. two forty at this point. Yeah, two thirty five, two forty. People forget when Kevin Durant wants to play defense, he's locked up LeBron in the past. Yeah. So, yeah, it when you're like you said when you're when you're one of the greats, that's just kind of what you can do. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Victor is definitely fun to watch. Um, I agree with everybody, too, that, like, I just want him to stay healthy. Him and Chet, because Chet's kind of figuring his way out um, through the NBA as well. But, yeah, Vic Victor is something, something crazy so far. I want to get your thoughts on a team that you probably haven't thought about that's still your team. Yeah. Those New Orleans guys, those birds. Yeah, I've been – They're two and one. I've been kind of just – Letting them ease into the system, yeah. into the season, see how they kind of play. Zion's back. He he looks yeah. good. He still looks a little heavy, but mm -hmm. he's still Zion. Yeah, he's still producing. Yeah. Um, but it, I don't know what it is with these two. Zion's back. Brandon Ingram is hurt again, and he's like he might not play today or whatever. I think they have a game tonight. Let me see. Uh, um, he game time decision for. Monday yeah. So it's time. like. Can these guys play together? They played together for, like, the first game of the season. Um, and they look good together. So, yeah, I mean, the Pelicans, they haven't done anything uh, to change their team. They're still the team that they are. But each year, their guy, like, Herb Jones gets gets a year older, another year of experience. Brandon Ingram, Jonas Valanciunas, CJ McCollum. I like that team. I think they could be dangerous if they can stay healthy um, and put all the pieces together, of course. But, yeah. I like them so far. Yeah. I personally, I've liked what OKC has done. Seeing Chet playing is just really fun to see. Right. He's averaging like 15, 7, and like three blocks. Mm -hmm. Good start for him. Shea Gojus Alexander, he's almost a top five player at this point. He's yeah. almost unstoppable. Luka Doncic, a monster. Mm -hmm. He's destroying. Derek Lively has been a good surprise so far. Yeah, he has. The Nuggets look the same. Yep. Jokic is just a different level of player. And Kristaps on the Celtics has fit in beautifully. Him and Drew. Yeah. Yeah. They might have found something. It's been a really team. seamless fit. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about a few terrible teams because I, I think that's hilarious. The Washington Wizards are really just going to be a comedy. Like, oh, seeing the, Jordan's Jordan Poole's shot selection. Yeah, the Twitter. And, oh, my God, it's so hilarious. Mm -hmm. Like, him and Denny Avdia already don't like each other that much. Yeah. It, 
I feel bad for watch for Wizards fans, but my God, it's going to be hilarious watching them. Yeah, Miami is one and three right now too, hey. along with Cleveland, two playoff teams. Miami is hasn't been great in the regular season for like the past two three years. Yeah, they're so weird. They're mm-hmm. also not fully healthy. I think Toronto has no offensive punch. Yeah. I mean, like, they got none. rid of Fred Van Vliet, so it's just basically Pascal Siakam, and I think they're asking too much of OG Ananobi at this point. Now. Scotty Barnes is averaging 20 and 10. Oh, my God, I didn't realize yeah. that. He's averaging almost 21 and 10, mm-hmm. and it's not really mattering. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, Pascal Siakam is only averaging 16. Mm-hmm. What happened yeah, to been, Pascal Siakam? He's just kind of struggling. That's Yeah, that's not good. Houston struggling is pretty funny. Oh well. my God, they look so terrible. All in on they, Van Vliet and Dylan Brooks. Listen, they still they look like the same AAU team they looked like last year. Yeah, Jalen Green is he? Uh, I'm listen. I'm not yeah. gonna go as far as yeah, but he he's not looking especially like, after all of his talk draft night. Yeah, it's it's not looking great for him. It's not. Listen, shouts out to Shingoon. Yeah, I think we both appreciate Alperen he's, Shingoon. He's a yeah, good that player. team as a whole. Not great. Yeah. Memphis. Jeez. Oh and four. Yeah. It's I, I did not expect them to be I, 0 and four. I either. didn't either. Even without Ja, like they should be something's decent. just something's just missing with them right now. Yeah. I, I, I can't tell what it is. Like two seasons ago they won a ton of games without Ja and just right. were in a groove. Yeah. Like they they maybe it's because Marcus Smart and Derrick Rose just aren't a, like a a complete fit with them right now, but yeah, some something's just off with yeah. Memphis. I'm not sure. And then the two good teams in the West that we haven't really touched on is Golden State and Sacramento. Sacramento it's still look good. De'Aaron Fox has taken it <laughs> another level yeah. right now. Uh, he's averaging like 30 points a game or something like that. Let me see. He is averaging <laughs> 31. Yeah, and he's 31, got, six and four. Yeah, he's got My some God. like crazy efficiency right yeah. now going too. And it. Sabonis. Just at 17 and 15. Just crazy. Yeah. And they're doing that all without Kevin Herter playing very well. I don't know how that's possible. Steph is averaging 33. Yeah. Is he going to fall off? No. Like, his game doesn't fall off. I, I knew his game was made to like keep going as he got older. Yeah. But this is crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's, it is insane. It's just the, the health and diet, I think, these days. I think players just have more longevity. Yeah. Like even Chris Paul, like he had like twenty eight assists to like four turnovers yeah. so far. He he is literally just playing like floor general, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's pretty cool to see. He came off the bench for the first time in his career, uh, which was wild to see. And then uh, Clay Thompson has been banged up a little bit, but uh, he Golden, did, he doesn't look the same. I don't know if he's yeah. He kind of has been even more hit or miss. He forces it like when he doesn't feel it, he just starts. Yeah, chucking more and more, and it doesn't really look great. Mm-hmm. Uh, lastly, the Lakers look very average, and that's good. Yeah, they look like <laughs> that's yeah. They're the Dallas Cowboys. Gabe Vincent isn't really hitting threes. Yeah, I assume it's just because he's a Laker. Mm-hmm. If he was still in Miami, I guarantee he'd be shooting like fifty percent from three. Yeah, they're not using Rui Hashimura as much as we thought they might be. Uh, Torian Prince. Torian is Prince. A lot of time. Eighteen point zero points, twenty points, four points. <sighs> yeah. The Torian Prince experience. Yep. Congratulations, LA. That's what you got. Yeah, it's it's weird. Yeah, they they got to keep relying on LeBron to kind of be a superhero mm-hmm. in year twenty one. Yeah. He can halfway still do it, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. Why does he? Why is he so gifted? I just I just don't understand. It's just one of those people. He's a Terminator. Um, all right, I think that's enough NBA. Let's get into college football playoff rankings. First poll to come out. The best team in the country at number one, your Ohio, Ohio State, State Buckeyes. Buckeyes. Um, yeah. Ohio State has basically been sitting at three in the coaches' poll, AP poll, for almost the entire season. It's basically been Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Florida State for basically the entire season. Yeah. Why did the college football playoff decide that Ohio State is the number one team in the country? I think it's solely just based off of the Notre Dame and Penn State wins. Mm-hmm. But they didn't look impressive in those games, and they haven't looked impressive in any game. Yeah. It is Marvin Harrison has been winning them games. Yeah. For the most part. Their defense is really good. I'll give them that. Mm-hmm. Their defense is better than it was last year, and they're a 
really, really good defense. Yeah. But their offense. Yeah. Not what we're yeah. used to seeing. The run game isn't very good. Kyle McCord is solid, but nothing special. And yeah, Marvin Harrison is just every time they need they need a big play and need to separate to win, he does it. Yeah. I don't I don't know how they I mean, I kind of get it, but at the same time, I would have just kept the rankings the same, to be honest. I don't think any of these top teams have done anything super special. We've seen each of them have their falters. Um, maybe Ohio State, you could say, has the better wins overall. Um, but I don't, I don't know. It's It's a hard argument. Until Michigan plays Ohio State. Yeah. Like nobody nobody will have a like legit argument on something until that game happens. Well, do you think we we're confident Georgia's most likely going to win the SEC. Well, do you think if Georgia smacks uh Missouri this weekend that they get the number 1? Yes. Cuz that I I would think that that should be enough to jump back in front of Ohio State. Yeah. They got number 12 Missouri this week, number 10 LSU next week, and then 17. These next 3 games are most likely going to solidify Georgia at 1. Yeah. Because it's all ranked SEC matchups. Mm-hmm. Even if a few of them might be overrated at the moment, they're good. Yeah, Quality SEC teams right now. Right. And then Washington right at five, they're on their stretch of their season where they can make the playoff. They got USC, Utah, Oregon State, Washington State to finish Listen, out the season. That It's going to come down to the Pac-12 championship probably because yeah. I think Oregon is, might be a better team. Yeah, they Washington they, just pulled it out in a like a crazy rivalry home game. Mm-hmm. Oregon looks stronger. Yeah, overall as a team. Yeah, Oregon looks really good right now. Um, so it there's a lot of teams still in contention. Uh, man, I know we're we're trying to talk about the top four, but this Louisville team, if if they just didn't blow it against Pitt. Just imagine the season they could have been having. Yeah. This this schedule set up for them to win at least ten games. Yeah. And it's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. But Leah, like you that, that Pittsburgh that Pittsburgh loss looks even worse now. Yeah. Because they just they got beat fifty eight to seven by Notre Dame. Yeah. It was just embarrassing. It's just wild so that they, they could win out. Yeah. <laughs> it is entirely possible that, that that they finish eleven and one. Yeah. And I they're not a great team, but they're just good enough with uh like easy enough schedule to get it done. Yeah. Yeah, the only movement that's going to really happen this week is probably Georgia and Washington, um, at least into the potentially the top four, because everybody else has kind of a, a stinker game. Uh, Michigan's playing Purdue. Florida State's playing Pitt. Um, and then, what did I just see? Florida, Yeah, Florida State's playing Pitt. Um, but then Washington and Oregon have their big matchups. Oh, Washington just destroys you. I'm so tired of USC. Yeah, me too. With these terrible wins. They beat Cal 50 to 49. Yeah, they should have lost again. They let Cal score 49. Yeah. Like, I, they are a joke of a team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Um, I don't know. Do you have anything else to say? I don't really have a ton on college football this week. Shouts out to Kansas. Yeah. They got their biggest win maybe in program history. Mm-hmm. They beat top 10 Oklahoma at home. Yep. Basically. Fans stormed the field. Knocked them off right when yeah. Oklahoma was thinking they were all tough. In three years, Lance Leipold has made Kansas a legit football program again. Yeah. And it's one of the hardest jobs in the country. Mm-hmm. It's incredible what he's done. I hope he doesn't leave Kansas. I hope he just maintains them as a good football school because that would be incredible. Yeah. Um, who else? Honestly, yeah. Besides Kansas, I don't have a lot to say. Yeah, uh, see, that's what I was yeah, thinking. Oklahoma too. State in at twenty-two. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a name you need to know from Oklahoma State. Okay. Uh, they're starting running back. His name is Ali Gordon. Uh, these are his rush lines over the past five weeks. Uh, 121 rushing yards, 136, 168, 282, 271. Mm. 
He's at 1,087 yards and uh, 10 touchdowns. He's running for seven and a half, well, 7.7 yards per carry. Mm. Okay. Sophomore Ollie Gordon at Oklahoma State. Mm. He's destroying teams. Yeah. Almost single-handedly because their pass game isn't great. Mm-hmm. He's just running through everybody and having an incredible season. Yeah. So Ollie Gordon will probably be uh, like one of the top five running backs in the draft when he comes out because he's only a sophomore. Yeah. Uh, Air Force made it into the top 25 for a college football playoff. Um, yeah. James Madison did not. They're still in the a AP. Shame. They're still in the AP, but they didn't make the college football playoff ranking, uh, which is unfortunate. But uh, it is what it is. It's not honestly. It's not that big of a deal. They're still eight and zero, which is fun to watch for James Madison. Um, yeah, that's basically all I got because we're coming down. There's a couple big games this weekend, and then we're coming down to the wire, starting to get closer and closer to those conference championships. Um, so let's talk about the NFL trade deadline because because we, we got to talk about it. The Lions made a move. I think it was a good move. The Lions traded for Donovan Peoples-Jones, former Michigan player, had a really good season for the Cleveland Browns last year, hasn't been really utilized this year at all. Um, They traded him for a sixth-round pick in 2025, something like that. Um, Adds wide receiver depth. I think it's a great move. I have no problem with it. I like it. Um, He could be... As wild as to say, he could replace Jameson Williams. If Jameson keeps dropping passes. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, that's the trajectory that we are headed towards at the moment. Um, the problem with the trade deadline was that the whole time a lot of Detroit fans wanted one of the commander's players, Montez Sweat or Chase Young, depending on what the price was, depending on you know everything. Well, the Chicago Bears, who are terrible, went out and got Montez Sweat for a second-round pick. And then the 49ers, another contender in the NFC, went out and got Chase Young for a third-round pick. Now, a lot of people are up in arms about this. Some people say, oh, trust the process. A lot of people are saying, well, the, both of them are going to be free agents after next year, and the Lions have a lot of guys that they have to sign. Okay. The thing about the NFL is, if you have an expiring contract with a trade and you do not re-sign them, most scenarios, I don't know the exact logistics, but you will get a compensatory pick. And so you basically get that pick back, and it's almost like a free rental. If you don't sign them, it's hard for me to understand why the Lions didn't want to go for one of these guys when I think the asking price was fair, especially for Chase Young, a third round pick. Sure, Brad Holmes has been pretty good in the draft, but at the same time, we need some defensive line help now. I I don't. I don't know where to go with it because I feel like the Lions should have been aggressive. They didn't. If you look around the league, the 49ers got Randy Gregory. Sure, it's a it's a risk, but kind of a low risk, high reward. They went after Chase Young. We saw the Eagles go after Kevin Byard. Apparently, the 49ers were in talks with, uh, I think, a Dory Jackson from the Giants. They said that fell through last minute. Um, but they were talking for that, which is another cornerback. But the Lions stuck to their notion of we want a specific guy for a specific price and a specific fit to this team. I don't know like who they called or what kind of trades they maybe tried to get um, because there was some inkling that maybe they were trying and they just didn't get the right piece or People weren't trading. Like, Daniil Hunter was another one from Minnesota that people were talking about. Uh, the the wild one that we all talked about was Max Crosby. Sounds like the Raiders just didn't want to trade him. So maybe the Lions called on Max Crosby and they just said no. We don't know the inner workings. But either way, it's frustrating to not come out with some defensive piece just because we've struggled with pressure 
the last few weeks. So it, it's a little annoying. I think Peoples Jones is a great pickup, but I don't know if I like the idea that they're trying to still build when right now the NFC is wide open and the Lions have a chance to just jump right in front of everybody. Uh, the Eagles are 7-1. and one. The 49ers are 5-3, and three, so the Lions are already the second-best team in the NFC. And if the Eagles falter and the Lions keep going on this trajectory with their easier, easier schedule, the Lions could be in first place in the NFC, and nobody wants to play in Detroit for a playoff game because they know our crowd's going to be crazy. And I think that's what people are kind of forgetting. Like, if we can get home field advantage, at that point, like, anything is possible to me. Whereas some people I feel like are just settling for, let's just make it to the playoffs. Let's get this division. But I'm trying to look that there is a chance that we could pull something off. I mean, it would be somewhat of a miracle in a, in a way, but it's not that far off, I guess. Um, I don't know. Do you have any uh, differing opinions about the trade deadline or how do you feel about it? I've really, I've just been enjoying the Lions fan discourse all over social media. Yeah. The overreactions, the People saying, like what you said, trust the process. I'm in the middle on the on the whole situation. I like the Donovan Peoples-Jones move. Uh, along with being receiver depth, he could uh, return. Right. Yeah, he if could Cody be a good Freeman special never gets hurt. Yeah, he, yep. he could, he's a really good returner. So he helps with that too, or gadget plays. But, yes, I am – somewhat confused on why they didn't get more aggressive trying to go after a defensive player, a pass rusher like Chase Young or Max Crosby. Mm -hmm. It's all in retrospect seeing the 49ers get him for just a third-round pick. Right. Who knows if they would have done the same deal with Detroit. Mm -hmm. But it does suck seeing that. Yeah. That Chase Young was that attainable. It mm -hmm. was possible. I, I feel like Max Crosby, they would have had to get – to give up a ton to get Max Crosby. Right. Because he's a top three pass rusher and by far the Raiders' best player. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it kind of sucks that they couldn't get another piece on the line, but they're, they're still a really good team. They're still a top five team in the, in, in the NFC. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I, I just I like the spot they're in. Yeah. I will say the silver lining that I when I had a chance to think about it, Aleem McNeil is having a really good season so yeah. far. And I think maybe what the Lions are banking on is that when James Houston comes back, he's going to hit the ground running. Now, to me, that makes me a little nervous because he's coming back from an ankle injury. Um, and that's that's hard to jump right back into because you got to trust your ankle. Um so we'll see with that, but maybe that's their thinking. And if he does come back like and he plays how he was at the end of last season, then, you know, maybe they were right. Maybe we didn't need any help. But it's just a little concerning that we're almost, to me, feeling like we're banking on that. Um, I guess the other thing, too, that's nice is that Julian Aquara has stepped up a little bit lately. He's starting to look better. C.J. Gardner-Johnson is supposedly coming back. People are starting to predict, like, week 15, potentially, which would be really good. Um, so th there's some hope there, but I don't know. I would have liked just to bolster up that possible defense. That's maybe my only thing, but the lions get a bye week this week. So we don't have to worry about the lions. They can have a, a week off before they have to go to the chargers, which is going to be their, they're basically one of their last tough matchups besides maybe the Cowboys. Um, so yeah, but the Lions got it done on Monday night. They looked good. Uh, they should have won by like 30, but they couldn't get it in the end zone. Yeah. They made a few mistakes, but hey, they they got Aaron Rodgers out of Green Bay and they got Josh McDaniels and their GM out of the out of Las Vegas. So that's pretty cool. And technically Jimmy G out of their starting starting role. So Lions are the uh the business breakers lately. Yeah. And another really good game out of your rookies. Jameer Gibbs breakout game kind of. Yeah. He had several really good runs. Mm -hmm. Sam Laporta had like eight catches and a touchdown. Uh, Brian Branch played well. Jack Campbell's still figuring it out. Yeah, but the rookies, once again, are yeah. kind of the talk of the town uh, for this team. The only problem is David Montgomery's going to come back, and he's probably coming back after the bye week. So 
I don't want to give anybody's hopes up that Jameer Gibbs is going to be that every game. It's probably going to go back to what it was because they like David Montgomery in his role. But they may try to uh, put Jameer Gibbs in a few more spots. So it's a kind of wait and see. All right, let's get into week nine picks. Last week I had a pretty good week. I thought you had a terrible week last I week. I had a pretty <laughs> you, good you, week. You got like four right last week. Well, I'm talking about like this week. Oh, this week. Like okay. This yeah, week yeah. as last okay. week, you know. Yeah. Yes. The week prior, very bad. Yeah. Week eight, pretty good. I beat you by one. <laughs> okay. I had nine. You had eight. Um, the notable ones, I guess. Um, I had Tennessee. Didn't know that Will Levis was going to ball out like that, but he did. So I'll take it. Uh, Giants. I can't. Listen, I can't stand the Giants. Listen. They they ruined it. I. It, I, it just might be bad luck for Tyrod, man. It was bad. It might just be bad luck. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, Joey. I'm sorry. And then they blew. The, they just blew the game in the end, as well. So, that that's a whole thing. That was kind of the only big games. Um, so we stand. I have 67 on the year. You have 74. So I made a slight bit of ground. And this week's going to be chaotic because there is some good games and there's some really bad games. And starting off with Thursday night. Speaking of bad games, well, it might be exciting. Will Levis taking on Mitch Trubisky, Tennessee at Pittsburgh. Who are you thinking? You going with the Will Levis experience? Or are you going with maybe the Steelers defense? Is the game in Pittsburgh? Yes. So that's maybe the one advantage. I hate this team and what Matt Canada is doing and the fact that Mike Tomlin is just complicit in it. And they just keep just, winning. Just on the sideline, just shaking his head and clapping. Mm-hmm. I'm taking Pittsburgh. Okay. I'm going with it's tennis. possible Will Levis has incredible back-to-back starts, yeah. but you remember what happened after Jan- Daniel Jones had that incredible first game? Yeah, we've against seen Tampa this. Bay? We've seen this before yeah. with players. He came back down to earth, mm-hmm. and Pittsburgh's defense is still pretty good. Yep. All it takes is a few T.J. Watt pressures, mm-hmm. and he might start seeing ghosts. Yeah, and making those Will Levis mistakes. Yeah, yeah, it might be a a slugfest because Tennessee's defense is good as well. Um, and then on Sunday morning, we're back in Germany. Miami taking on Kansas City. Technically, Kansas City is home. How many points? What's the over for this game? I don't know. I haven't looked at it. Although, honestly. Kansas City's offense, hey. Yeah, it's not as good. Denver beat them for the first time in like six years. And I don't, think that, I don't think that Taylor Swift is going to make the trip out to Germany. So, Travis Kelsey, his numbers don't lie right now. I'm taking Miami. Okay. Kansas City's offense just isn't in a really good place right now. McCall Hardman came back. He's wearing 12. Yeah. He muffed a punt. Like, mm-hmm. things are just strange. Yeah. Um, I think this is a toss-up game, so I'm going to go with Kansas City. Their defense has actually played really good. Uh, their younger guys, Trent McDuffie and George Karloftis, have played really good. Uh, I don't know if I trust them. I think I would go Miami uh, normally, but... I'll, I'll go with KC just because it's a toss-up. Um, next game, <laughs> we have, I believe it's going to be Jaron Hall because Josh Dobbs just got traded to the Vikings and Taylor Heineke. Jaron Hall versus Taylor Heineke. Who you got? Uh, give give me Heineke. At least you can trust him to win an NFL game and look pretty good. Jaron Hall, we don't know what in the world that's going to look like. Hey, RG3 said Jaron Hall after watching all his BYU games. He's a a good player. (laughs) All right, RG3. Okay. Jaron Hall has a big arm, and he's probably going to overthrow and throw some picks. Yeah. That's probably what's going to happen. I want to pick Minnesota, but I probably should not. Let's see. What are the other games? There's so many toss-up games. Let's go for it. Let's get wild. Oh, boy. Taking Minnesota. Is this going to be a Cam Akers game? I don't know. This, he scored Minnesota's first rushing touchdown. First yeah. rushing touchdown <laughs> Eight of the season. Eight weeks into the season. Poor Alexander Madison, man. Yeah. And the quarterback controversy continues. We got Clayton Toon, maybe Kyler Murray. There's some speculation. Maybe Kyler could be ready to go. But I'm hoping, I'm more so hoping for Clayton Toon That's versus P.J. Walker. That is exactly what I want also. <laughs> the sicko bowl. Oh, it's bad this, this week. This game is in Cleveland, isn't it? Yeah. Cle- Cleveland by at least two touchdowns. Yeah. I that agree. defense is a problem, even if Kyler plays and won't be pretty. It's a terrible game for Kyler to come back. Yeah. Definitely yeah. is. 
Oh boy, it keeps getting worse. We got Brett Rippin. Play- Who does Brett Rippin play for? The Rams. Oh my God! Because of the whole Stetson is, Bennett. Is he still in rehab? We, there, there is talks that he could return this season. I, I, but honestly, I haven't, I, I haven't paid attention if he's been on the sideline this whole. No, season. I don't think. I think okay. he's been away from the team the entire time. Um, so that kind of Brent ruined. Rippin, my God. That ruined their backup quarterback plan, so they didn't go out yeah. and get anybody early on in the season. So it's Brett Rippin versus Jordan Love, who cannot hit the broad side of the barn lately. He hasn't been good, but that offense overall, they gave um, Aaron Jones like eight carries last week. Yeah. And Jordan Love led them in rushing. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing. Like, I, I don't know what the plan is. Mm-hmm. They have no identity. And it's amazing to see the Packers have no identity and have no plan, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's a sight to see. Mm-hmm. Brett Rippin. <laughs> <laughs> and when he came in for Stafford uh, last week, he looked bad. Is it in Green Bay? Yeah. Does that matter? I mean, it might be cold weather. Oh, my God. What are you What are you doing this game? What? <laughs> That's what I said. What? There's some bad ones this week. Listen, you got Puka Nakua and Cooper. Is Cooper Cup playing? Yeah. They've both been bad, Listen. though, the last two weeks. And now they have Brett Rippin thrown to him. I have no idea what to take in this game. I think I'm going to go with Green Bay because their defense is still pretty good. And uh, they're at home. Maybe it's cold weather. Well, you're going with Green Bay. I'm just I'm going with Brett Rippin. What am I doing? <laughs> I'll take the Rams, I guess. Okay. Yeah, see, I didn't want to get stuck with, Jet, with Brett Rippin in this <laughs> scenario. Uh, Washington Commanders at the New England Patriots. Sam Howell must just hate the Eagles, man. Yeah. He plays his best <laughs> against pl- the Eagles. And then Jalen Hurts just turns it on for two quarters and it's over. Yep. Who'd you say the commanders were playing? <laughs> New England. New England? It's at New England. New England has been playing better lately, but they still suck. Yeah. Who'd New England play last week? Honestly, I can't remember. They lost, them. They lost at Miami. Yeah, it was Miami. Yeah. Give me the commanders. Yeah, I'm going with the Commanders. I feel like New England cannot. They also have an identity problem. Uh, the two games that they played pretty well, they were actually throwing it to Ramondre Stevenson, and then last week they went away from that, even though they're playing the Dolphins and they're down by 100. I don't know. To me, it doesn't make sense. Oh, boy. Chicago at New Orleans. Funny enough, who's starting for New Orleans? Their car. And then uh, Bajan. You know, when they were showing... Agent Bajan. When they were showing Bajan's dad, I was like, I recognize that guy from somewhere. I thought he was like an actor or something. And then I realized I saw him from YouTube. He's an arm wrestler. A, pro- a professional <laughs> arm wrestler. <laughs> that is amazing. And like... That's hilarious. Yeah. Well, you're watching professional arm wrestling videos on YouTube? Yeah. I did for a little while. They do... They, Listen, I understand going down like w- random wormholes, but yeah. that's hilarious. They do like the weird like backstories where they meet in like this old abandoned building and they're all like trash talking each other. It's pretty funny. I'll have to try to pull it up after the show, but yeah, that is amazing. Chicago and New Orleans. That is more interesting than this game. Yeah, probably. You should probably just look up the videos of his dad arm wrestling. Yeah. God. The Bears beat the Raiders two weeks ago, right? Yeah. But then they. I'm trying to figure out a scenario where the Bears win this game. They got trashed by the Chargers. Derek Carr actually played well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll go with the Saints. Yeah, I'm going with the Saints, too. I think they're just a better overall team right now. Battle of the Birds. Seattle at Baltimore. That's a good. This could be a good game. Seattle at Baltimore. Seattle is Seattle is plays. Well. They play like a different team every week. Yeah. I don't know like what their calling card is, but they always figure out a way to win. Mm-hmm. You said it's at Baltimore? Yeah. I'll go with the Ravens. Okay. Battle of the Birds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lamar versus Geno is an interesting quarterback matchup. Yeah. I got to stick with the Ravens. They're my other team. Hmm. I think it's a good toss-up matchup because I think Seattle's kind of dangerous, but... I'm thinking Baltimore's defense is just going to get it done. Tampa Bay at Houston. Baker Mayfield versus C.J. Stroud. Give me the Texans. I'm going with Houston. 
Yeah. Okay. This one's hard for me. This might be the Baker downfall. I'm going to go after for the hot start. I'm going to go for Tampa Bay, but I don't feel confident about it, to be honest. Yeah, the Texans just lost to the Panthers, which is. Yeah, that was a bad look. Yeah. But I, I know the Texans weren't very good. They were mm-hmm. just fun, but yeah. Yeah. They're probably due to bounce back, but I'm just going to go with Tampa Bay. I think it's a good toss up. Indianapolis at Carolina. Gardner versus Bryce. Another ugly one. Did the Colts play last week? They did. Who'd they play? Because I had Zach Moss on my bench, and I was mad because he was playing well. Yeah, which is wild because Jonathan Taylor had 95 yards, I think, in the first half, and then they played Zach Moss in most of the second half. Kind of weird. did Indianapolis play last week? Um, They lost to the Saints, yeah. Derek Carr played really well against them. If Derek Carr plays really well against them, yeah, their defense has been pretty bad this year. Surprisingly. They're uh, playing the Panthers, though, and they still can't really score. Give me the Colts. Okay. Minshew Magic, Uncle Rico out there making it happen. I think this is a toss-up enough. I'm going to go with Carolina. Two-game win streak for Carolina? That's bold. Sounds awful. It's very bold, sir. It is, but eh, I think it's doable. Oh, boy. This could be Tommy DeVito. Against Listen, Aiden O'Connell. I, I can go. I think it's supposed to be Daniel Jones. That's what I've been hearing. But it could be Tommy DeVito versus Aiden O'Connell. I can go on and on about my appreciation for Tommy DeVito and his years at Syracuse and his last year at Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> the Italian New Jersey quarterback. Mm-hmm. He, he's a legend. He did great handing the ball off to Saquon last week. <laughs> Listen, he he ran a, t- a touchdown in. Yeah. He 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 really is like the type of player. Have you ever seen the movie Invincible? Yeah. He is like the new version <laughs> of Invincible. The Italian kid yeah. coming from New Jersey mm-hmm. playing for the Giants. Yeah. They need to make a movie about that. Did you see the Giants had minus nine yards passing <laughs> in the game? <laughs> I don't blame Tommy DeVito on that. That's the Giants' fault. They gave the ball to Saquon 36 times. I would hammer everything for the Giants if Tommy DeVito was playing, but I'll still just take the Giants. Wow. Actually, well, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> Aiden O'Connell was playing. Yeah. Give me the Raiders. Yeah. Give me the Raiders. How the Giants are, are a disgrace. They're weird because their defense still plays pretty good, <laughs> and the Raiders are still only averaging 14 points a game. Um, so that makes me a little nervous about this game. But Shouts I, out to Devontae Adams smashing his helmet on the sideline. Yeah. But I feel like Aiden O'Connell should be the quarterback for this team. I think Las Vegas should be able to get it yeah. done. Let's retire Brian Hoyer from now on. Yeah. We don't need to see him anymore. He had one good – like that first game back, like we said, he looked really good, and then all of a sudden he went back to being Brian, <laughs> Brian Hoyer. Yeah. Um, The late afternoon game, game of the week, Dallas at Philadelphia. This should be a good one. <sighs> Philly. I don't want to pick the Cowboys, but I'm going to pick the Cowboys because I think it's a doable game. That's what I did a few weeks ago when the Cowboys won, so you might win this one. Yeah. But, yeah, I still just... Philly looks good right now, for the most part. They have their mistakes, but... Yeah. A.J. Brown has been unstoppable, and I He don't... broke Calvin Johnson's record. I don't know how Dallas Seven straight games of 125-plus yards. Yeah. Uh, and then the game I'm probably actually most excited for, and it's probably mostly because of fantasy purposes. I have a lot of uh, Buffalo and Cincinnati players, but Buffalo at Cincinnati. Cincinnati might be back. Yeah. They might. People, the thing that stinks is that this is going to be such a good game, but people are like already touting this as the DeMar Hamlin game because it's the return. Oh. And it's just kind of like. It's just not necessary. It just kind of puts a damper on the game, in my opinion. Give me Cincinnati. I'm going with Buffalo. I'm winning this week. I can can feel it. I hope this game turns out to be a shootout. Especially since I got a win in fantasy again. Mm -hmm. Things things are turning around. Yeah, making your way up. Yeah. And then finally, Monday night's kind of a stinker. We got the Chargers at at the Jets. Give me... Chris's team. Oh, no. Don't. You keep picking. Well, I guess it worked out last week. Yeah. Shouldn't have, but. 
I need Brandon Staley to have the game that gets him fired. <laughs> and this can be it. I'm taking the this Chargers. This be the one. Because I, I said this maybe like the last two weeks, and the Chargers have played pretty well. Oh, no, it was just last week because they played Chicago on Sunday night. This is another game, yes. I'm picking the Chargers, and if they lose, Brandon Staley should be fired. Listen, I, I am a fan of Zach Wilson's confidence continuing mm-hmm. to rise, and pulling out that game last week was very big for him. I'm very sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just just go with the the vibes. Okay, of the New York Jets. Okay, I'm in a weird spot because I like the obviously I like the Chargers, but I I say it every week. I want Brandon Staley to kind of be fired. So everybody does. I'm I, pretty sure. I want them to win because if they lose this game, they're basically their season might be toast already. But yeah, we'll see. It should be fun. Like I said, the Lions have a week off, so uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll uh, pay a little more attention to the Pistons this week. I can't watch them because they are on Bally Sports, and I do not Listen, condone that site. But you need to go on Amazon and get you a Fire Stick, sir. <sighs> Just do it. We have so many streaming services and things like that. I looked at like NBA League Pass, but that's expensive. I don't know. I, I think I'm just going to watch them from the Statcast on ESPN. <laughs> And determine how they are from that. I guess that's pretty reasonable. I yeah. guess. All righty. This has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next time.